Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com and I am pleased to be hosting today's session all about securing your ERP. Our speakers today are Tony Bernard of Avanade and Stefan Schauboyer of To Increase. Uh, it's great to have them both with us. Uh, I want to also remind you in the audience that uh, we will uh, take your questions too. So uh, please do be ready to ask those really at any point throughout the presentation and uh, Tony and Stefan will make time at the end to answer uh, as many questions as we have time for. Uh, also be on the lookout for a, a poll question uh, that should be uh, showing up partway through the event today. So without uh, any further delay, uh, I'm going to hand things off to Tony to get things started. Great. Thank you, Jason. Can uh, everybody hear me? We do. Excellent. Well, as Jason mentioned, my name is Tony Bernard. I'm a technical solution architect with Avanade. I work in our uh, business applications market unit, and I specialize in Dynamics AX 2012 and Dynamics 365 for operations. Uh, I've been with Avanade about six years, and uh, prior to that, I worked for Microsoft on the Dynamics AX product team as a lead program manager there, where I was involved with the uh, initial release of Dynamics AX 2012. So I'm very happy to be here today and to talk to you all about a very important issue, which is securing your ERP. Uh, Co-presenting with me today will be Stefan Schauboyer, as uh, Jason mentioned, and I will uh, actually give him an opportunity to introduce himself when I hand it over to him. He's going to be doing a, a very interesting demo towards the middle part of the webinar. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about uh, security and I want to spend a little time first and just kind of introduce Avanade and to increase in the partnership there. Um, and then I'll spend some time talking about the security risks and challenges that we see uh, both Avanade and to increase as we work with customers around ERP security. Um, and at that point, we'll, we'll take the poll question that Jason referred to. And then I'll hand things over to Stefan to do um, a demo of the dynamic security management tool around which the Avanade security services are based, and then I'll, I'll jump back in to kind of give you an overview of the service offerings that we uh, have in the market at this time. And uh, hopefully we'll have a little time at the end there for some question and answer, but as uh, Jason mentioned, feel free to type them in the window as you think of them, and we'll um, kind of go back at the end and, and catch up with those. Um, so very quickly, uh, just a, a quick overview of who Avanade is, if you're not familiar with us. Um, we are a large global systems integration firm and within the dynamic space, also value-added reseller. About 30,000 people strong worldwide. We have over 70 offices in more than 23 different countries. Um, we also have a very substantial global delivery network, which we refer to sometimes as offshore or nearshore resources uh, in seven different countries, including India, Mexico, the Philippines. Um, we are a joint venture between Accenture and Microsoft, uh, started about 17 years ago, and uh, majority owned by Accenture at this point, um, but about two, two and a half billion, almost two and a half billion in sales last year with a 20% year-over-year growth since our inception. Um, we work currently with over 1,200 clients around the world, um, and since our inception have, have served over 4,000 uh, clients, and they've done all that with very high uh, customer satisfaction. Um, we're one of the, if not the world leader in Microsoft certifications. Um, we, as I mentioned earlier, are a, a global SI, so we deal in all things Microsoft, not just Dynamics. We do .NET app development, we do digital, uh, desktop transformation, uh, SharePoint, you name it, CRM. And, uh, and as a result, we've got over 24,000 Microsoft certifications a across the entire stack. Um, and 24 MVPs, uh, along with 23 gold partner certifications. We are number one in the Dynamics AX space, Dynamics AX and Dynamics 365 space in terms of certifications. Um, and we've participated in uh, over 20 early adopter programs with Microsoft over the last five years, so uh, still have a very close uh, relationship with them. And today, you know, we're presenting jointly with To Increase. We've been a long-standing partner with To Increase. We've had a terrific partnership with them. Um, you know, we've got a model where we take the, the various solutions that the To Increase team builds, and they've got a comprehensive portfolio of industry-specific integration and business productivity solutions um, that we leverage and wrap our services around to bring to you, the customer. Uh, one great example of that is our rapid results program, uh, which is a business process oriented way to think about implementing uh, dynamics, and that is based on two increases rapid value tool. 
Um, we also do a lot of work with their uh, service industry solutions and, and implement those uh, for them. Uh, but today we are here to talk about security and, uh, and the services that we've wrapped around the dynamic security management tool. And uh, you know, so, so why security and ERP? A lot of people, when they think about security, they think about you know, the bits and the network traffic and network security and firewalls and you know, all the stuff you hear in the news is hackers uh, hacking into you know, whatever it may be and stealing stuff. Um, but when you talk about ERP, you know, security in that context really isn't just about that. It certainly includes that, but it's also really about the business transactions and the data that a company houses in their ERP and how secure that is and how protected is it from, um, from theft, from fraud and uh, sabotage and things like that. And so um, one of the things that, that really has brought that into more acute focus now is that the ERP market has matured to a point where um, the applications that you see are now very comprehensive. And in the case of Dynamics in particular, you have this single automated system that has all of this functionality from core financials to procurement and sourcing to manufacturing and MRP and warehouse management and retail and you know, transportation and, um, you know, just this really broad footprint of uh, capability that all exists within a single system. And therefore, um, it's the opportunity for inside users in particular to um, either intentionally or unintentionally uh, exploit that um, is, is much greater and the risk much higher. And so you do um, get subject to things like internal fraud. You know, I'm sure you've all heard the story of the accounts payable clerk who set up the vendor company that was really pointed toward their bank accounts and started paying invoices to themselves. Um, and that obviously results in very specific financial loss, but there's other financial loss that can be associated um, with security incidents that you know compromise a, a company's integrity with their customers or their vendors or the public image of that company. Um, and then there's just outright sabotage, people doing things that either, um, you know, sabotage the system directly or make their financials unauditable or, or, or increase the liability uh, in those things. And then there's just audit compliance. So even if you are doing things right, um, how do you prove it you know, to the auditors? And so the challenges that you know, people have to overcome when it comes to trying to address those risks inside of an ERP system are that you know, setting up basic security uh, is challenging in a lot of systems, right? Um, the more sophisticated the security capabilities are, sometimes the more difficult it is to uh, establish the correct security roles. And we see that a lot in the dynamic space. It is a, a pretty robust role-based security system, uh, but it is also can be very complex when you want to go off the, the standard roles. Segregation of duties is also something else that comes into play, especially for public companies in the U.S. Um, you know, that are subject to you know, certain regulatory constraints and certain auditing uh, regulations. And, um, you know, that can also be very difficult. Where do I start? Which duties is it really important that I have segregation of duties for? How do I enforce that? How do I continue to monitor that? Um, and then if you do have an incident, trying to figure out who did what when um, and who had access to what when is, it can be very difficult, if not impossible, in certain systems. And I think what you'll see today um, through the tool is that um, there's some capabilities in there that will really make that uh, more straightforward. And then lastly, just um, making sure that the uh, auditing capabilities are there and that you can get the information out to prove to an auditor um, that, that you were doing the right things uh, can also be challenging. Uh, and so at this point, after having covered those uh, very quickly, I want to um, introduce the poll, and uh, Jason, if you can kind of flash that up for everybody. And uh, really would be interested in your input in terms of which of these risks and challenges are the most concerning for your organization. Feel free to you know, check more than one box there, um, as I know people think about this in multiple ways. And while you're doing that, I want to highlight that you know, a lot of times these, um, these breaches aren't necessarily intentional. They aren't the act of somebody who's intentionally trying to defraud the company or, or you know, get retribution for feeling treated poorly or something like that. Sometimes they're completely unintentional. And um, with all of this functionality uh, and ability in a single system, if you have people that are over-provisioned in terms of their privileges, 
Um, it can be completely accidental that they you know, wander into an area of the system and they view sensitive employee data or sensitive customer data, or they're trying to complete you know, this transaction and they do something wrong and, and end up creating a transaction in an area of the system that they shouldn't normally be able to do. And since they don't really know what they're doing in that area, they, you know, they do something that causes um, the hook to be out of balance or you know, some other issues there. And so, you know, security isn't just about protecting yourselves from the bad guys, it's protecting yourselves from the good guys who maybe aren't, aren't trained or have, you know, too much uh, privileges provision to them. And Jason, if you just want to let me know when, when we've got um, some results there and we can uh, see that. Okay, so it looks like um, a lot of people um, are really concerned about the difficulty with which to implement application security. And, um, and establishing and monitoring segregation of duties, that was definitely the two. And then audit compliance looks like it's coming in um, at a close third with, uh, with fraud and, and um, insufficient auditing, kind of bringing up the, the middle part. And um, sabotage and financial losses, not as much uh, of a concern. Terrific. Well, thanks for your input, everybody. That's um, very useful and um, not completely unexpected. Um, and I think what you'll see as we um, get into the demo that Stefan's going to do in a few minutes is that um, some of the, a lot of the benefits that the Dynamic Security Management Tool and the Avanade Security Services will, will provide are really to address those key issues. Um, so you can definitely um, set up your security properly, which will obviously protect yourself from any sort of internal fraud, either intentional or accidental. But really what you're going to see is the ease with which you can get role-based security configured, security of duties configured quickly and easily, and, you know, if so desired in a way that, you know, your own organization can take on those responsibilities on an ongoing uh, basis. And that will in turn help you avoid unintended or unnecessary escalation of user privileges. So you'll make sure that everybody has the privileges that they need, but, but nothing more than, than what they need. And all of that is obviously going to help you during uh, an IT audit, ensuring your compliance there. Um, and then some of the other benefits here are that, you know, the AX licensing model continues to evolve and, again, in, in its own right, can be somewhat complex. And you really want to make sure that you understand your license consumption to make sure um, that you are in compliance uh, and also to make sure that you don't have any unexpected costs because maybe you have some users that are overprivileged in a way that, um, kicks their license up to the next tier and costs you extra money that you don't need to be paying. All right, so um, with that said, I'm going to hand things over to Stefan to uh, give us a demo of the Dynamic Security Management Tool. Take it away, Steph. Perfect, thank you. So just a uh, short introduction of, uh, of myself. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan Schaubauer, and I work uh, in St. Uh, Chris. Um, and I've been working with AX the past um, 11 and a half years, 12 years, and I'm working as an architect, functional architect, and I'm also the guy behind this tool. So feel free to ask any, any question that you might uh, have in this regard, both technical as well as uh, functional. So I'm going to start with a very short introduction uh, through a, uh, a PowerPoint here, and um, I'm going to start introducing the tool and the methodology that we have behind it. So the tool doesn't only cover the security and license areas. Those are closely interconnected in the AX2012 and, and, and Dynamics 365 operations. Um, so we have a, a number of different tools to help you in this, both proactively and retroactively as well. But we also have tools that are going to help you assign your user, user rights. So this means we, we can actually enable copy config here, so you can uh, copy user, um, assigned user rights from one user to another, even uh, during import. Um, so we have a number of different user management tools, and then we have an extensive uh, set of uh, audit management tools that are going to help you when you have an IT audit. And actually, after you start the audit logging here, you are actually able to go down into any uh, menu item in AX, any table, any field and see who had which access at any point in time after you started logging. So this means that uh, if you assigned uh, sysadmin rights for uh, a, a minute or two, it will be visible. And that is something that the auditors really like and it's going to save you a bundle of time when, um, 
when you use it during an IT audit. So that being said, I'm going to jump to the first figure here, which is our security hierarchy. And our security hierarchy here is the, the one from the, uh, the Microsoft uh, documentation, but I just want to go through it very briefly so I know that we're on the same page here. So on top of the hierarchy, we have the authentication part. And the authentication part is where we have our users. And the users typically derive from Active Directory, but can derive from other areas. We actually come with a number of different Active Directory tools that will enable an organization to maintain, or basically maintain, uh, users from the AD and not uh, so extensively you know, through AX as you need to do using the, the standard methods. But you're going to see that uh, during the demo. What you actually assign to the users uh, is found within the authorization part here. And this consists of a hierarchy where you have security roles on top. The security roles are constructed of duties and privileges that are directly linked uh, to the security role here. And what we're going to focus on today, uh, just to show the examples, are uh, privileges. And we're going to focus on the user interface elements and tables and fields. User interface elements, also called entry points or menu items, it comes with a very variation of names, but that is also the area that covers the license. And actually, every single menu item in uh, AX comes with two sets of licenses. So this means you have view license and maintain license. And you don't really have a lot of areas in, uh, in AX where you can see this. So it can be very difficult to actually um, uh, to figure this information out. And then we have uh, some tools on regards to tables and fields where we will enable you to very easily to limit access to, uh, um, to these fields, uh, for instance. And I'm going to show you that during the demo. So just to put some numbers on it, you have around 90 different security roles, 1,600 duties, 9,500 privileges, and then you have more than 50,000 of these updates here. And everything can be cross-combined and interlinked um, uh, as, as uh, what you want. And that is what makes AX very strong because you can ba basically tailor an AX to your operational roles if you have the, uh, the, the capabilities to do that. But it's also what makes it difficult if you don't have the capabilities because then the way to get there is very long and very hard. I'm going to keep on here. So what you're going to see today, this means security process, by the way, um, uh, is also a link or a, an example of the security process that we have here. And the security process is, uh, is very linked to the product dynamic security management. And what we tend to do here uh, is when there is a new uh, uh, customer, we create their specific security process uh, so that this can be used both to tell the story internally as well as um, <clears throat> as well as um, use it during an audit. And this means that you will actually go through uh, or have this specific process uh, tailored for your company. So just to go through some of it here, in this case, we have a, a customer that uses a project manager to specify which operational uh, area that uh, we're going to work on in the beginning. Then they choose a person that's going to carry out a recording and um, then you actually just start a recording and you go through every uh, function and feature in AX that you want to grant access to. And we automatically uh, store all of that information, which is then loaded into the dynamic security management main form and matched automatically to every single object uh, in security object in, uh, in AX. So this means you're going to see a list of security roles, duties, and privileges that match the, uh, the given um, menu items that you have recording du recorded during the, uh, the process. And all of this is done to make sure that you don't have to iterate through all of the uh, data manually. So you can now re rely on an automated feedback that only shows you relevant areas. So for instance, if you record, uh, which is what I've done in the demo here, very, very simple recording for menu items, and you uh, state what uh, kind of access level you wish to, uh, to these menu items during the recording, we can show you specifically which roles, duties, and privileges that grant access to these menu items with the desired access level. 
and then we can basically tailor a security role on the grounds of that. But that's what you're going to see in the demo, and that's what is visible here. So we have a number of different tools to create security roles, uh, which uh, can be applied in the different scenarios that you want to support. But common to all are that we are going to test them, and we're going to go through uh, this uh, iteration process here until we have a working security role. You can see that here, and then we're going to move it to live. This is typically done by, uh, in this case, Avanet uh, TSA. And um, when the security role has moved to live, we work with a project, or not a project, but a term called soft live. So if you imagine that you have uh, created accountant uh, security role version one, and then you do some modifications to it, um, um, and, and then you uh, deploy accountant version two into live, you don't want to move all, uh, all users from the version one of the role to the version two of the role uh, to start with, because that's a, that can be um, hazardous if there are errors on the version two. So what we do is that we have them coexisting side by side. And then we have a functionality where we can move users from one role to another, and then they are then going to test this in live. And when this very limited amount of users have tested OK in live for a period of time, we then move the rest of the users from version one of the role to version two. Thus, we, we basically make sure that we um, have uh, at, at least interference as possible with their daily work. If there are uh, something, uh, some elements that aren't uh, meant to be as they are on version two of the role. What this basically means is that we have taken a holistic approach, and this is very uh, uh, closely linked to uh, the, the, the Avanet services that uh, uh, you're going to see uh, later on here. But we have a holistic approach where we walk you through the, all the way through the, the security process here, through choosing which operational areas to start with, uh, doing the recording, creating the security role, moving it to live, and making sure that it goes as smooth as possible when you have that transition from uh, version one, for instance, to version two. So just to um, give you uh, a very clear example here on the business case, there's a very large difference between the cheapest uh, license in AX, and this is from 2012, by the way, uh, to the, the most expensive one. In this case, we can see it's actually a factor 10. So if you have a, a security role that is a task uh, cal, and that is now modified to being an enterprise, which I have a, uh, an example, uh, which I'm going to show you during the demo, from real life, um, that then moves up here, that can actually be quite expensive for the organization. And it can be very difficult to actually see that uh, in the standard information, uh, in the standard areas of, uh, of AX. Um, so we have uh, put a lot of effort into that area. And you're going to see that during the demo. My last slide here uh, contains some of the customers that have purchased the solution uh, during the, the last quarter or two quarters, uh, some, of, uh, some of them are two quarters old, I can see. And it uh, covers uh, um, both uh, very large uh, enterprises um, where we have uh, thousands of users, and, but also very small uh, customers where we uh, may, maybe only have 10, 15 different uh, AX users. It really depends on, um, on your need uh, in um, in, for instance, in connection to IT audit, but basically everyone has a need in in creating the, the security roles as slim as uh, as, uh, as possibly. Uh, yeah. So that being said, I'm going to minimize this and then open uh, AX and show you some of the functionality. Great. So what we're going to start with is if we go back to the process and just talk about that, we have now chosen an area that we want to record. We have now carried our recording, which means that we've gone through the areas of AX that we want to grant access to. This can be multiple persons carrying out a recording at the same time, which is then used uh, as a foundation for the new security role. Obviously, in this case, I've taken a very simple approach just to show you uh, some of the functionalities and not to have a lot of uh, waiting and so forth. So. We've gone through all of the different processes that we need to support in our new security role. And then um, 
sorry, that's my youngest uh, kid you can hear there. Um, and then um, we have now matched it automatically to all of the different securable objects in, uh, in AX. And that's what we're going to iterate through now. So I've just opened the dynamic security management main form. I have loaded the recording from uh, the person that has carried it out. I have now done the match uh, automatically here. And this has left me up with a, uh, an example that I'm going to show you now. In this case, I have four different menu items available to me here. And I can see that I have used a, uh, a recording called DSM recording, which actually pops up every time we lock a menu item and ask what kind of access do you want to grant to this specific menu item. Thus, we have a very specific wish list from uh, the organization here. And this has now been matched to uh, the security roles, to the duties, and to the privileges of AX, and in, as you can see here. If we open the matched security roles, we have all of the different security roles that um, grant access to at least one of the recorded menu items. You can see that we have something called a match degree here. And if we are working with a match degree of 100, that means that we have uh, access to all four menu items with the access level wished from the organization. So basically, you can just uh, assign this uh, security role to the user, and they should be good to go. Obviously, this role might grant too much uh, accent, ac uh, access because it doesn't, uh, probably doesn't only grant access to these four menu items, but it does grant access to the menu items uh, in Wish. Otherwise, you can construct a new security role based on an existing role here. So you can select a security role, and then you can open the privileges that provide access to the menu items from the recording, which are not accessible via the selected security role, one of the absolute longest labels in AX, but it makes sense. You can do it both with duties and privileges, by the way. And then you can simply select privileges to add, and we only show you the privileges relevant in connection to the recording. So these privileges grant access to the menu items from the recording, which the role doesn't. Uh, so you can simply uh, select a role here, select a privilege, and then you can create a role. So you extend the functionality, or sorry, not the functionality, but the accessibility on an ex uh, existing role. But you can also create a fully new role based on a recording. And in this case, we have uh, matched privileges. And in here, we can search as, as we want. So if we don't want to uh, search for or look through uh, the DSM, privileges. We only want to look uh, through standard, for instance. We work with um, prefixes to make it very easy to, uh, to sort out standard versus uh, modified. Um, then you can do it in this way. And if you want to create a new security role based on these uh, matches here, you can see the traced entry point name here, which is linked to the recording. You can see these are the same menu items that we recorded. They are accessible with the required access level that we uh, use within the recording. So we don't show the privileges that uh, grant uh, edit rights to the accounting, disk markup, trans, uh, purchase order menu item here. We only show you the relevant uh, privileges. But what you can basically do in order to construct a working security role in this case here is to block mark or multi-mark every single of these privileges. As soon as you do that, a button called Create Role with Privileges opens. And in this case, you can simply enter an AOT name. And as you can see here, we also work with prefixes here. So we're just going to enter Test. And then we have, uh, for instance, Sales Clerk. This will be the name of uh, the security role. When you assign it afterwards, you can enter a description. And then we have a functionality here called Remove Access Menu Items. And what we actually do is that we merge all of these privileges together into one new privilege. And we do this for a number of different re reasons. First of all, for ease of use. So this means instead of having to iterate through a number of different privileges that uh, coexist on a number of different security roles, you now have one security role that only contains the menu items from the recording um, 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 in, um, that you have just carried out before within the process here. 
So you end up with a privilege here that has all of the exceptions that Microsoft has created on, uh, on the privileges uh, in, in the AOT. So we are basically 100% certain that we can carry out the process with the menu items that uh, we have recorded. And then you can uh, choose the use access level from recorded entry point, and that even means that we're not only going to put in the menu items from uh, the recording onto the new privilege, we're going to put it in with a required or specified access level. So this means you're going to have a tailor-made uh, security role very, very easily uh, created uh, using the DSM tool here. Um, and this means that you can tailor make uh, security roles for your operational roles, thus it makes it easier for them to do their daily tasks in, in AX because they don't have an abundance of access features that they don't use. And it's going to be easier to, uh, to have um, new uh, persons within the, these operational areas as well. And during the introduction, I talked about license, and this is very uh, keen to us. So in this case, you can actually see that we have the privilege license type here, and then we have the menu item license type here. And we, the lowest example here, which is a standard example where we have a, a privilege called view activity hierarchy, the privilege itself ends up being a functional user cal but the menu item that we want to add with viewing rights is a task user. So instead of just adding the existing privilege, you can actually end up working very proactively with your license situation. So you can, you can slim everything down to the uh, utmost importance, uh, thus, as I said before, optimizing the working process, but also optimizing what you uh, pay for your AX license because you don't assign menu items to your users that they don't need. If you want to move this, when you create a new security role or a new duty or a new privilege in, uh, in AX, it um, creates a new uh, object in the AOT. And that can be fairly difficult to, uh, uh, or not difficult, but time consuming to construct a privilege, or not a privilege, but a project that you uh, collect all of the new objects that you have created in, in order to export it, for instance, to the live uh, environment of AX. But what we've done here is that we've simply created a tool, a functionality here, where you can choose create a project, you can write a name, and then you have a, uh, an opportunity here to include every single object that you have modified. And this means that we don't take into account uh, all of the standard objects that comes from Microsoft, all of the ISV objects, or anything like that, but all of the objects that you have customized in your organization is going to be automatically uh, found and added to the project. So if I were to press OK here, I would create a new security role by this name. I would merge all of the privileges to collect all of the uh, exceptions that Microsoft has, uh, has put in. And then I would remove all of the menu items that weren't recorded. And then I would assign the access right from the recording I would create the project and do a full scope analysis of the role, put everything that is necessary to, uh, to have this role working in, a, uh, in another AX environment into the role automatically. This is replacing a very time consuming uh, manual process uh, if you use standard AX. This is one way to create a security role. We also have the possibility to create um, license roles where we grant access to everything uh, in AX uh, which is accessible within a given license. We can also choose between existing duties if we want to uh, create a role based on duties and then I simply select uh, as, a, as a stated here, or I block select everything here. But we can also use these duties to create the SOD. And the beauty of this is that instead of having to iterate through the 1,600 duties that, you, that are in AX in order to find the ones that you need to segregate, you can click uh, on recording. You can record the two buttons, for instance, that you want to segregate on the two forms. And then you can do the matching. And then we're going to automatically find all the duties that uh, contain the specific menu item. And then you can basically just select them. You can see which uh, trace uh, entry point name we're talking about here. And then you can just create SOD. This means the only thing that's left right now is to give it a name and a severity level. And then you have created your SOD. So all of the hazard and all of the uh, hassle with 
binding the correct duties to segregate is done automatically by DSM. Obviously, we have a number of other tools in here to create roles, but I'm going to continue with some of the other functionalities that uh, we have in here. This is not a full demo. This is just an introduction to some of the, the, the scope that we have on, on regards to uh, functions and features. So imagine that you now want to delimit access to certain uh, fields or, or even tables. Then we have a functionality here called table security recording. If you open that, you have the possibility to start a recording. Let's just call it 8123. Now the recording is underway. But as opposed to the other recordings, which automatically collects all of the menu items in play here, this requires uh, the end user to actually put in uh, or key in uh, what fields and, and, and tables they want to delimit access to, typically. It can also be the other way around. In this way, in this case, I navigate to the customers. I just open it here. I press edit. And then in this case, I want to delimit access to credit collections uh, fields uh, here. So if we just open the table security recording, we can see if I press F11 on, on my keyboard, I log information on the entire table. If I press F12, I log information on a specific field. So what I want to do in this case is to delimit edit rights to these three fields, the credit limit, credit rating, and mandatory credit limit uh, uh, checkmark field. So what we do as soon as you press OK is that we automatically analyze the, the, the form and the, the table structure and figure out which place do we want to define security. And then we can simply state what kind of access do we want to grant. This is also uh, usable if you have master data management, for instance. And then you simply iterate through all of the fields that you maintain centrally and state view. And then you can basically assign that uh, viewing rights to uh, all of the roles that aren't supposed to be able to, to modify the data. But you simply iterate through all of the fields that you want to, in this case, case the limit. And then you return to the recording. And then you can see that we have now recorded information on three specific fields. And we now stop the recording. If you forgot anything, you can append to the recording by pressing this uh, button here. And that's automatically going to start the recording. And, and then you're ready to uh, extend uh, the recording with further fields or tables. But let's just imagine that we want to put this uh, or to implement this on some security roles. The only thing you need to do right now is to push the override permissions on multiple roles button, and then simply point out the roles you want this to be implemented on and then press OK. Then you have automatically delimited access to a, a very uh, specific number of uh, fields and tables, but to all of the roles that aren't allowed to do it on the same time. Again, a very, uh, a very can be a very time consuming process to do manually, but whereas this is uh, more or less optimized. This recording is not only applicable uh, through the uh, security uh, functionality as we talked about here. We also have an audit capability here where you can uh, navigate to the report, uh, reports, security, dynamic security management, uh, IT audit here, and security audit report. And in this case, you can simply point at the re uh, recording we just carried out here. And then you can state a, a uh, another recording, but this is uh, for the uh, menu items, uh, the recording that we used uh, in, the in the beginning. So you can ask um, both for accesses on a specific menu item or multiple specific menu items and then specific um, tables and fields. You can specify users here and leave it blank. This means if you leave it blank, you look at all users, all active users, or, or users that have been active during the period that uh, that you request here. Then you can sort the uh, report either by user, meaning that we're going to show the report uh, sorted, in this case by user, where we are going to show you what the different users have had access to in um, uh, to the, the, the specific fields in play here. So what this means is that if you have visit from an auditor, you can basically start the table security recording, iterate to the bank accounts, to the uh, some personal data areas, uh, fixed assets, or whatever uh, setup table they want to look in. Basically, just iterate through it. 
and then uh, point at the recording here, point at uh, some specific users or all users, show the uh, the period that the audiences want to uh, to see, and then press OK, and then you're done. Then you have shown the auditors not only a concurrent view of what your security situation is in AX, but you have shown them your entire historic uh, progression of your security setup of AX since we started the, the, the log. So this means you can go back in time, at any point in time after you started logging, and see what is my security uh, uh, like. Let me see the time. I have five minutes left. Great. So the last things I'm going to show you are on regards to user management, um, and uh, then one last thing on regards to retroactive license analysis. So if we just open the users form here, you can see here that if we open a, a, um, a in this case, a, an Active Directory group, then you have some new functionality. You can see an AD group membership here. This means that if we press this on a <coughs> specific um, uh, Active Directory group, you're going to see all the members of this group, uh, which is uh, uh, Placed directly in the AD. So this is not data coming from AX. This is coming from, from the AD directly. If you do this not on an Active Directory group, but on an Active Directory uh, user, then you're going to see all of the different, um, let me just see here, all of the different uh, AD groups that this given AD user is a member of. So, and again, this can be re very relevant when you work with uh, the, the setting the security rights because we have, as you can see here, uh, put in some uh, some effort in order to make it possible for you to uh, work with the Active Directory groups. So in this case, you can see here that we have a new button called User Security Lock. And if we open this, you can actually see the specific security lock from this specific user. And as we saw before, this specific user is a member of uh, the uh, TI AX DSM team AD group. And this means that um, this user GRH automatically inherits the applicant anonymous security rule, because that's actually a standard feature in AX. It's not that used because you can't see this exact information anywhere in AX, so you need to do this manually. But what this means, this list, is that you can have a full view of any um, uh, security role assigned at any point in time, whether or not it's been automatically assigned or manually assigned, uh, whether or not it's been signed, assigned by you or any other person, uh, then you can see it in here. You can also see whether or not it's been uh, indirectly assigned to the user via an AD group or directly assigned, if left blank here, uh, to the user. You can also see which legal entity they have had access to and within which period, and also who removed the security role from this given user. All of this is very valuable when dealing with the different uh, uh, examples from the security um, uh, operations within a given company. So one of the last features I'm going to show you here is the personalization functionality. And from any part of any form of any AX, you can navigate to any menu item. In this case, I'm going to show you it on the attachments button, as you can see here. And then you have a new tool here called Security Tree. So imagine you have a question from the organization stating that I want to have access to this specific security role. Uh, how do you want to grant that? Then you can simply right click and choose role, and you, then you can actually see all of the roles that grant access to the specific menu item. And you can drill on, so you can see all the different users that have access to this specific uh, uh, system user role, and which roles this specific user have, and so forth. Uh, you can obviously also just right-click this and see all of the different privileges and the required access that is connected uh, to this here. So you can drill in and out and up and, uh, up and down within the different uh, security roles. Obviously, we have a lot of different other functionality, uh, as I said, uh, in, in uh, the DSM tool here, but we don't have time to show that. So the last things I'm going to show you or introduce you to are uh, the different manuals that we have available here, because we've really put some effort into making you able to do this yourself. Um, so there are two manuals, one manual that cover the uh, security, 
uh, development and one manual that covers the IT audit part because it can be diff uh, difficult, uh, sorry, different people within the organization. So in this case, we start with a uh, table of contents and this is uh, using hyperlinks. So you can uh, just jump to wherever you want. Um, and then we have an introduction to why security and a glossary that explains the most used terms. But then we simply start explaining the functionality of the tool. And we even link to recordings on uh, YouTube where we show you how to use the tool, when to use the tool, and in which uh, scenarios it's relevant. But we not only cover the, uh, the functionalities of DSM here, we also have tips and tricks. So we have tips and tricks on how to grant access to the management reporter and, and, and so forth. So, so anywhere you use security roles, but you don't design them or anything like that, but when you use the security roles, we put that in. So it's very, very granular, uh, the, uh, the, the documentation that you will be uh, handed out. And that includes the IT audit here. That even goes to explaining the functionalities of the AD in connection to uh, inherited uh, security roles uh, within the uh, AX uh, setup. And obviously I could talk a lot more about this, but uh, I'm going to hand over uh, the, the queue again. Oh, Tony. There we are. There you are. <laughs> when I went to share my screen, I uh, lost my thing and I had to wait for the control panel to come back. So I'm back. Thank you, Stefan. Um, as you can see, the dynamic security management tool has some very, very cool features and, and you only saw a portion of them, as Stefan mentioned. There's, there's lots of other capabilities there. And what I want to uh, talk about now, just to kind of wrap things up, is um, the security assessment offering that, that Avanade has wrapped around um, this very powerful tool. And we really uh, come out with two ways to initially um, go to market with this. So historically, Avanade has done um, similar type of exercises that Stefan was described, but we were doing it with the standard Microsoft development tool and just the out-of-the-box functionality. And we were doing that as part of our overall uh, application management services, which is our maintenance and support service offering. And that was really the only place we could offer it because we had some very specialized, trained people, um, and that was usually the context in which you know, we came up about, uh, upon these types of issues. Uh, otherwise, we would do it as part of an implementation project, but now with the, the capabilities that the To Increase tool uh, provides us, we, we really feel we can actually go out and, and offer this as a discrete service offering um, because the tool is so usable um, and we can train a lot more of our delivery resources on it and then ultimately uh, train you, the customer, if you so desire. So one of the first things that we're going to market with is this rapid design for security roles. And, you know, a lot of people, and we're targeting existing AX 2012 releases, and, and you know, I'm sure the question will pop up if it hasn't already, but, you know, is this, is this tool ready for D365 yet? The TI team is working feverishly to get it upgraded. Um, but that is not going to be available until the second half of this year. Um, so right now we are targeting existing AX2012 installations. And, and you'd be surprised as we go around and work with customers either to plan and do upgrades or in some cases to, to kind of rescue um, troubled implementations, um, how many times we go into an organization that really hasn't done anything around security roles. In some ways it's it's treated like reporting or even worse than reporting where they kind of save it to last and they don't necessarily think about it proactively. And so our, our main offering that we're going out here is what we're calling this rapid design for security roles offering. And we're really shooting to time box this based on the number and complexity of security roles that an organization wants to target. And so we'll take a little bit of customer input and, and say, hey, we want to focus on these five roles or these ten roles. And, you know, and we think these ones are pretty straightforward and these ones might be more complex. And we'll have, uh, you know, one or two focused workshops with them to really flesh that out and to do uh, this recording process and go through that process model 
um, that Stefan had showed you, and then um, work with you to validate those roles through a conference room piloting exercise. So instead of just kind of chucking them over the wall to you and saying, hey, test these out, let us know what you think, we're going to um, you know, work through that with you in an interactive session and, and fine tune those roles so that we can reduce the amount of iteration um, that we have to go through. And then when it comes to testing and implementation, we really feel at that point um, we could go one of two ways based on customer preference. As you saw, the, the tool is pretty um, robust. There's a lot of great documentation around it. And so if you get to the point where, as a customer, you feel like, hey, you know what, we got this. We, we get the tool. We understand the process. Um, you know, with a little bit more training, Avanade, um, we think we can take this through and drive it through the rest of the testing and implementation process, maybe with a little bit of support from you. Or maybe you say, hey, you know what, this is great, but, but we really don't want to focus a ton of resources on that um, you know, from a technical standpoint. So Avanade, can you take us over the goal line there? In that case, we would work with you to coordinate, you know, the user testing and, and, and validation of those rules and then um, do any adjustments necessary and help you implement those into production. And then the last point on this offering, which I think is very important, is that um, role design is not a one-time activity. Um, security rules are really living, breathing parts of your ERP application. Uh, you know, regulations change. Um, the amount of capability that you need may change based on changes in your business. Users come and go. Reorganizations happen, and people take on different responsibilities. And all of those things can trigger uh, changes to the way your security roles are set up. And so we envision some sort of ongoing uh, support here. And again, you know, you have the op op opportunity if you feel very comfortable with the tool and the process to do that yourself. Um, but you know, there's some other opportunities or uh, options that Avanade wants to make available in terms of, um, you know creating a separate statement of work where we can come back periodically to, uh, to do role adjustments for you. Um, and then some people may also be very interested in just um, plugging into our application management services where we do maintenance and support on an ongoing basis. And we have multiple different levels of that, uh, most of which would include um, the security uh, management piece of that. And so that's the main offering uh, that we're taking out. Uh, also along the lines of the audit side of things and just license optimization, as you saw in, in part of the demo that Stefan did, um, it's very easy to, to accidentally give your users access or privilege to a menu item that um, inadvertently ups the license required for them. And so um, we also want to go to market with a user license optimization offering. And this would be a very quick hit time box exercise, probably a week or two at most. Um, where we could come in, leverage the DSM tool to do license auditing and evaluate your licenses and, and leverage a lot of the ticks and tips and tricks that, that Stefan mentioned they have in the documentation and really work with you to identify opt opportunities to optimize your licenses, down licensing um, people where you can by um, giving uh, the right security role, that custom role with just the required privileges and duties that they need. Um, so that you can really maximize your license dollar. And again, you know, after we get through with that initial assessment, if you want to move forward and implement that on yourself, uh, then training on the tool and some basic support from us. If you want us to do it, then we can kind of move into that rapid security design uh, process and uh, get those rules uh, built and tested for you. Um, and again, periodic optimization here. Users come and go. User management's an ongoing process. Um, again, you can do that yourself can do that with Avanade under a separate statement of work, or again, if you want to plug into our application management service offering, um, you have that option as well. So that's the, uh, the two offerings that we're talking about right now. Um, and if you want any more information on those, please you go to our website, uh, avanade.com, business applications, and um, you can get some more information there, and you can uh, plug in your information. And if you just want to mention security assessment, um, there, then that will make sure that your requests get uh, routed to the appropriate people. And with that, I will wrap up our presentation for today, and we can move on to uh, question and answers. All right. Thank you, Tony. And uh, to anyone who still has a question that hasn't yet asked it, uh, please do enter it into the Q&A, and uh, we will get to uh, as many as we have time for here. So let me take the first one. How do I delimit access to sensitive data, like personal information or bank accounts? Yeah, if I should uh, take that. Um, we, uh, we saw that uh, table security recording functionality that we had. 
and you simply start the recording there and then you iterate through the different uh, functions or sorry the different fields that you want to uh, to limit access to from the front end and then you point at the security rules that you don't want to uh, to have that access and press OK and then you're basically done so all the technical savvy stuff that you uh, you need uh, when you use standard you can uh, you can discard that All right, next question, where is the dynamic security management guide available? Um, I can answer that as well. Um, it is uh, available, um, as far as I understand, when uh, the software is purchased. Um, and uh, But, but uh, correct me if I'm uh, wrong here. I think it's part of the de deliverable. Tony? Uh, yes, sorry, I was on mute, Jake. Uh, yeah. Stefan, yes, you're correct. So when you engage with Avanade, we would um, you know, bring the tool and the documentation along. Because most of the documentation isn't relevant unless you have the tool. Yeah. All right, uh, next question. How do I make sure that the users don't have access to functions and features that they don't need? I can answer that as well. Um, this is closely linked to uh, the process that I talked about uh, in the beginning. And uh, what this means is that we actually ask the users to, uh, to go through this, but uh, to, to go through the process that they want to have access to. But then, as you saw in the process, you have another uh, person, internal, uh, external person, that goes through it and validates that that is also what they need. Um, and then you basically create uh, the, uh, the the tailor-made security role on the grounds of the uh, recording. Thus, it's, it's specifically designed for uh, the operational area that we want to cover. All right, let me make a last call for questions here. I see one more in the queue. And I uh, also want to remind folks uh, to be on the lookout for uh, a survey after the event. It always helps for our speakers and for us to understand how your experience was at the event. Uh, so let me get to this next question. How do I make sure uh, that I stay compliant regarding AX license consumption? Yeah, I didn't actually get to that uh, during the demo, but we have a functionality called Role and License Type Explorer in which we actually break down the full structure of any security role, any duty, any privilege, and any link between any of these objects in one table, and we show it. Uh, in an overview, and we can link that uh, to all of the different uses uh, in AX and which roles that have been assigned in which companies, which actually enables us to go down into uh, specific usage of AX. So this means we can see uh, why is it expensive to use it in one division, to use AX in one division in, in, in comparison to another division, for instance. So we can actually now start working very uh, retroactively, though, uh, not though, but we can work with the full scope of the data uh, that we have available to us here and do our analysis on what we have assigned to the specific users and what our security roles are constructed of. And then we can do the analysis there and, and take the correct measures afterwards using the DSM uh, tools that uh, you were introduced to. All right, another question that's come in uh, asking about recording. So is a recording basically tracking what you click on in AX and then recommending what roles can do those clicks? Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't only do that. It also recommends or shows you all of the different duties you can choose between if you want to create a full new role um, or all the privileges you can choose between in order to create a new role to uh, support that process. So you can see it from every angle you want. You can see it from role level, if you want to assign, if you're, for instance, are in doubt on uh, which role you want to assign to a specific user, you can uh, carry out a, have a stream lead or the person itself, if they're knowledgeable, knowledgeable on, uh, on that level, to carry out the recording and then simply match it to the existing security roles and then DSM will tell you which role matches uh, their given needs. Yeah. and, and one of the things, again, to be cautious of there is just because that role does everything that they recorded, um, you have to be careful because it, can may, it may also do more than what was recorded exactly. and, and you don't want to, again, inadvertently uh, create an escalation of privileges. So there's a bit of art to the science. There always is. All right, well, I see we are uh, 
hitting up against the top of the hour here, and it looks like we're through the questions. So uh, this might be a good time to start wrapping up. Uh, Tony, Stefan, thank you both very much for presenting today. It's our pleasure. Welcome. And uh, thank you to everyone in the audience for your attention, for your questions, for uh, participating in our poll. Uh, it was a real pleasure. And uh, as uh, I think Tony mentioned before, uh, certainly feel free to reach out uh, with any follow-ups. Uh, we did record today's event. We will be uh, following up with more details on that soon. And uh, with that, we are going to wrap up today's event. Uh, have a great day, everybody.